when it comes to working with MIDI in Live Tracker, Live Tracker is a very capable program that can really get a lot done. To add MIDI to any song, we'll just select the song by pressing on it and go to Edit Song. Now, adding a MIDI track is going to work exactly the same way we added an audio track. We just pop up right here and add either a MIDI track or a MIDI control track. There's a difference between the two. So a MIDI track is a track of MIDI that you've recorded or you've made in some other DAW. For example, I've made these before in Reaper or Ableton. Okay, so you may have a MIDI track where you recorded pedal changes or patch changes, and now you want to bring that in. A control track is where we're going to define MIDI notes individually uh, for triggering some other sort of software. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go and do a MIDI track first. I'll press the plus, and then I go find one of my exported MIDI tracks. Now, it reminds me to go to Sequence Review, and to see the length, I'm going to have to zoom way down. And I see my MIDI track length there. That's how long the MIDI track was when I built it. I can drag it along to where I need it in the song, including zooming in much closer if I need to. And I'm able to put that exactly where I want it, okay? Not only that, but as you can see, the time changing over here, I can set an exact time as well and then my MIDI subgroup that I want it to send out of. And so in the preferences, we define these MIDI subgroups, and these are our MIDI outputs. So for this example, I'm going to use my USB MIDI as the first one, and I'm going to actually, let me open up Loop MIDI to send that as my second MIDI output. Now to refresh the MIDI here, um, there isn't a MIDI rescan here in Live Tracker, so you've got to restart the program. I'll do that in a couple minutes, okay, for Loop MIDI. And that's just a MIDI looping uh, program to send information to other programs on the same computer. Okay, so now we're good to go. We've got everything set up and we can literally just save and go back, play the song, and the MIDI is going to play through. Okay, and we're going to see that MIDI on an attached program. We can also do the MIDI control track, which I want to demo next. So I'm going to close Live Tracker. There's never any need to save or anything like that. It's always saving just when you're in the song editor and you have the save changes and backup here. That's all you need to save. Um, so then we're going to go. And this time, instead of using a MIDI export file, we're actually going to go. Let me go to a different song. So we'll go to song B here. Notice I have all these different set lists, but the song B is the same in every set list. That's not it's not unique in, in that way. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and do a MIDI control track. Plus, and a MIDI control track is like a control event that happens uh, one time at the time that you put the MIDI control track at the, in the song, okay? So one way to find this is you can press play. You pause, space bar hitting the, the stop button, and then you can hit set current, and I can see in the sequencer view, it lines up that that MIDI event exactly where I pause the music. You can also just drag it around as well on here, put it wherever you'd like, okay? Now here in the event area is where we set up our MIDI event, okay? So we go ahead and we toggle active. The first one's active by default. You can do multiple MIDI events at the same time or just one. You'll set your MIDI channel. I'm just going to set 16 here. Then you'll set your value. That's the specific MIDI notes. So they start at zero. Um, I'll do this one as one. Message, whether it be a program change, note on or off, or one of these other uh, programs for various MIDI control. For different things, you're going to use different options here. Like if you're using a MIDI controller, like a MIDI keyboard or something, you'll use all these CCs as they specifically control different MIDI devices. For lighting, I use note on most often and I send that out a MIDI sub. This time I'm going to sub two. In my preferences, I'm gonna set that to my loop MIDI. That's just a MIDI loopback port that I can use on the same computer to trigger other stuff. And so then I can save, I can play the song, and my MIDI's gonna fire right at that point, okay? We can go ahead just for kicks, and I will go ahead and launch Onyx, which is a lighting program, a professional lighting program I use. Though, 
I know I can use the MIDI output here in Live Tracker to control many programs, including ones I teach here on Learn Stage Lighting, which are um, DMXs and Emu, um, uh, Light Shark, Light Key, Onyx as well. Um, those are the ones I do. So I'm just going to go in here, load a show. Just so I can show you where the MIDI's coming in. So put him over here, put him here. Once this show loads, I'll be able to show you. Now when I reload in and play the song, just by clicking to a different song, clicking back, I see my MIDI note on event happen, and I can use it here in Onyx. I have another video as well that goes over DMXs, which is a much more entry-level program. Uh, there are many programs for lighting, and here on Learn Stage Lighting, if you're new to what I do, most of what I do is teach people about lighting, teach people how to control it, and how to get the most out of it. Okay, so that's the basics of MIDI in Live Tracker. It really is as simple as either bringing in a control track event, you'll want to create one of these for every change you send to your lighting program, or you're able to go ahead and actually build that MIDI file in a different DAW like Reaper or Ableton or whatever you may use and then export it, bring it in here, and have it perfectly in sync with your music. The cool thing about MIDI control is you can control almost anything in the musical instrument world. You can control not only lighting, but audio consoles, effects, units, you know, keyboards and guitar amp modelers and all kinds of stuff. And so if you really take the time to dive into it, there's a lot of really powerful stuff you can do. Awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you did, and if you are going to buy Live Tracker, please do go through my link below so that I get a small commission for sending you that way. And it's just a great way to thank me for making these videos and no additional cost to you. In fact, you can actually get 5% off if you use my coupon code below. Next, we're going to talk about adding click tracks in Live Tracker. It's easier than you think.